Hi, and welcome to On Console, the video blog about my journey to becoming a certified NASA flight controller. Hi again, Jenny here. This episode will be on caution and warning, which is segment three, module three of the Cronus flight controller training. Now there are different classes of caution and warning events. I mentioned these briefly in an answer in another episode, but let's recap. So the different classes are emergency, warning, caution, advisory, and robotics advisories. An emergency is a life-threatening event that requires the immediate attention of the entire crew on board the space station. Now these are our big three, fire, rapid depressurization, and toxic atmosphere. So when an emergency goes into alarm on board, it sounds like... A warning is a fault, failure, or out of tolerance condition for functions that are critical to station survival and crew survival. Now this requires a response within about 15 minutes from at least one crew member. Examples of a warning would be a major power loss or a loss of attitude control. When a warning goes off on space station, it sounds kind of like... Now, cautions are less time critical, but they do have the potential for degradation if crew attention isn't given. So, there's usually no immediate action from the crew, unless a procedure says that they need to work it within one orbit. Now, examples of cautions would be a backup to prime CNC transition, or different S-band component failures. Now, when a caution goes off on board, it sounds like... Of course, there's plenty of hardware associated with caution and warning on board the space station. All this hardware helps to provide lights, tones, and general information about our different events. So, on the US side, there are seven caution and warning panels throughout the US, Columbus, and GEM modules. We also have the PCS, which are those laptops that provide for commanding and caution and warning, and they provide information on any event going on all over the space station, including all of our international partners. Now, on the Russian side, there's the PSS and the MPEs, which are their versions of caution warning panels, as well as the Russian laptop, which only provides information on caution warning events inside the Russian segment. Via these different panels and the PCS, the crew has the option to silence all tones whenever noises are going off. So they push the lift button for a caution and warning event that's currently in alarm, and that command travels up to the CNC, which sends out the command to the audio system to silence all those tones. Now, there are strict flight rules on this, which say that generally crew does it, because we don't want to silence all the tones on the ground when we're not sure if the crew has heard if something is wrong. So the crew also has the ability to manually initiate an emergency when they see that something hasn't automatically set off a sensor. Now, there are differences in how the ISS safes itself between a sensor-initiated emergency and a manually-initiated emergency. So, for a sensor-initiated event, the ISS knows where it happened, so it's able to isolate that module specifically. So, let's say we had a toxic atmosphere that was tripped off in Node 2. The ISS would stop the fans and stop circulation to Node 2 to stop it from spreading. Now, for a manually-initiated emergency, the ISS doesn't know where the emergency happened, so it starts safing the entire space station and shutting down all the modules to try and isolate the problem, even though it can't pinpoint the event. The caution and warning server, which has all the information on all of our caution and warning events, is managed by... Cronus! So, it's our job to make sure the ground and the ISS stay in sync. Now, we also check a console tool where our international partners can submit enunciation state change requests. Now, what are enunciation states? So, every event can be in one of three, and these matter when an event goes into alarm. If an event is enabled, we'll see lights on board, tones on board, and a message on our tools. If an event is suppressed, we'll see no lights, no tones, but a message will still come up. If an event is inhibited, we'll see no lights, no tones, and no messages, but we will see it come up in our event log, which is any change in any caution and warning event. Now, since Houston is the only one that can change these things, we look at the request, make the change, and then let our partners know when it's complete. That's all for this episode. Be sure to check out my other sites and pages and take a look at the previous or first episodes if you haven't already. Well. As always, thank you so much for watching, 
and I hope to see you next week and for many more as we get one step closer to being on console. Thanks, and have a great week!